Okay, so we're going to be demonstrating our generic power connection kit for self-regulating heat cables. Uh, this is just going to be an example of how to do it with the, uh, the materials supplied. We're going to be starting with the end seal and then we'll finish up with the power connection side and everything needed to do this will be included in that kit. Uh, tools that you're going to need are going to be a, a utility knife or other electrician's knife, tape measure, a handbrake or other means of sealing the ends, or crimping the ends down, a snips, and a needle nose pliers, as well as a heat shrink torch. It can be propane or electric. So we'll start off by first of all uh, scoring the outer braid about two and a half inches down and you can work it back and forth and then we're going to lightly score the face of it so that it can be opened up and removed off. After that we peel the back the ground braid entirely leave one inch of the inner core intact with the uh, outer jacket on the inner core and then we're going to take and put the inch and a half long heat shrink tube on it and then we'll shrink it down Okay, so that's a hot melt glue inside of there, and you want to heat shrink it down until it oozes out, and then we'll be able to pinch the top closed and hold it for 20 seconds. I prefer to use a handbrake as you can close everything at once, it's a nice finished edge, and you can also use like a bull nose pliers or a needle nose pliers putting a series of crimps on it, but the handbrake really works the best. I'm going to pull the ground braid back forward, fold it down, and then twist over. Now it's a good idea to wrap this with electrical tape or other uh, suitable uh, covering to kind of protect the um, any sharp points from coming through, or make sure you've got everything folded down so that no sharp points are able to come through. You push the covering down until there's about three quarters of an inch left on the inside that will be able to fold down and hold it in place. And then we'll shrink the rest of it. You want to make sure that you keep the heat moving across there so you don't scald the heat shrink material. You want it to be warm enough so that the hot melt glue inside is activated and properly sealed. You'll notice at the end here, some of the hot melt glue is starting to ooze out, and that's what we want to see, is that hot melt glue oozing out without scalding the actual heat cable jacket itself.
kind of press it down to make sure it's seated, and then close the top again as well. Hold it for 20 seconds. Okay, and then what we see is some of the hot melt glue squeezed out and everything pinched and closed down nicely. The next thing that we're going to do is go on to the power connection side of it. So on the power connection side, you're going to have a grommeted fitting. It's got a gland in there that's specifically sized for the heat cable itself. You want to make sure that that's on prior to starting. You want to slide it back far enough uh, so that we have room to do our power connection kit. Now this is going to be after we route everything down, uh, whether we're hooking over into the soffit for the power connection or exiting the side of the downspout. This is where we'll end up with our termination to hardwire into a junction box. You want to measure back 8 inches and that's where we'll score our first cut. Again, gently cutting through the outer jacket with a utility knife or an electrician's knife. You want to make sure we don't cut through the ground blade. And then we're going to lightly score down the length of it. Again, not cutting through the ground blade at all. We're going to relax back the ground blade so that we can make a little tunnel to pull the inner part of the heat cable through the ground blade. Double it over, push it through, and then we want to twist up the ground blade so that that can have the heat shrink kit for the ground blade applied over it. One inch up from the ground braid, we want to make a slight score on the jacket for the inner covering here, the inner core. And so we just slightly cut through it, flexed it back and forth, and we're able to pull it off. Now what we want to do is be able to strip out the two bus wires that are inside of the uh, inner core here. And we do that by just gently running our knife right along the ground braid. We want to be careful not to nick the ground braid. If we cut into the ground braid, that's going to reduce its ability to effectively conduct electricity. So what has to happen then is you have to pull back, cut everything off, pull back and start over. So what we don't want to do is cut into uh, this, these bus wires at all. And it's not necessary to completely expose the bus wires all the way along. We just want to cut off most of this conductive core material, especially the, the glue coating that's on the outside or the protective coating that's on the outside. Once we've gotten to that point, we cut a few just notches getting toward those bus wires and then we're able to peel them out and separate them from the conductive core and you'll strip them right back down to that section. On this side. Then cut out the remaining of the conductive core. Careful not to cut into the bus wires at all. Inspect your wires, make sure that you haven't nicked them anywhere. You'll be able to feel that as you pull everything tight. Make sure nothing's nicked and then twist the tops tight and straight on both of the bus wires. <clears throat> now we're ready to install the heat shrink tubing on there. You'll notice we've got quite a bit sticking out. It's always better to have more sticking out then to be real close and then have to strip some of this heat shrink tubing off in order to wire nut to it. Well, 
Okay, so now we're back to heat shrinking again. Pardon the noise. Got that heat shrunk down. Slip the half inch heat shrink tube over the top. You can see we bring it just down to the ground blade. Flex these back. And we're going to heat shrink that tube down to terminate the cable properly. Last thing we'll need to do is pinch down in between these for a 20 count and that will allow the two bus wires to be completely separated from one another. So you can see now that everything's separated. We've got a nice pinch in between there. The last thing we'll do before we would connect it to a junction box is to cut our wires to length, including the ground braid. And then from there, we would be able to go up into our junction box, whether it's a, a threaded junction box already, and then we would be able to thread right into that, or with a half inch hole, which is actually 7 8 inch, uh, for this half inch fitting, we'd slide it up into the junction box, be able to put this inside over the wire and complete our installation inside the junction box.